All right, hey everybody. We are going to get started on our first day of Amazon training. Uh, today is going to be uh, kind of an overview. We're not going to get super in depth, uh, but I want to just start with a few things uh, so that you can kind of understand what makes Amazon uh, still the most important and viable thing that most individuals uh, can do online to make. Uh, either a side hustle or some extra income or make it their full-time gig um, and how that applies specifically to you uh, given that we all have different circumstances so um, I did set up a little slide presentation as this first slide says I'm not a technical wizard um, I don't really know how to do that type of stuff and so I just put this together mainly these slides are just so that I don't have to keep reshooting over and over and over because I forget stuff so I jotted down the most important points and this is probably how I'll do each presentation each day they're just black and white nothing spectacular and then I'm going to show you some web pages that uh, give you a representation of what we're talking about so uh, we'll get started so uh, I think it's important that you first understand why it does everyone keep preaching to sell on Amazon uh, well, the reality is because we're all customers. Uh, statistically, Amazon is uh, accountable for over a third of all the retail sales online, and it's almost closer to half, especially right now at the moment this is being uh, filmed during you know the COVID crisis. Okay, just since the start of 2020 alone. Jeff Bezos, the you know owner of Amazon, the creator of Amazon, his personal net worth went up by 24 billion. That's because obviously people aren't out shopping, so this is a little bit of an anomaly for it to grow that fast. But the reality is, is this is now shaping the world that we're going to be living in once this is all done. So if Amazon was viable before it, it's even more viable now and afterwards. It's just going to keep continuing to grow. Okay, that doesn't mean that there aren't other ways to make money online. You know, there's a lot of things people can do, but this is why Amazon is still, I think, to this day, the best bet for anybody that wants to get started because with Amazon, there's already a level of trust that people have buying from Amazon. Uh, it's known by everyone. Uh, prime makes returns easy their customer service for you know individuals is very good um and so you don't have to build that trust you know you're not building a website saying hey come buy my stuff over here and they have no reason to trust you they already trust amazon and that is something that you can start off right from the beginning okay now i started back in 2014 and even though there's more competition now, there is a world of automation and tools from Amazon and from other outside sources now that makes selling on Amazon easier. You can practically do the whole things hands off now, whereas six years ago, I mean, you had to do everything pretty much from scratch or build your own software or your own tools or buy it from someone who had, you know, you know it was a huge cost now the unique thing about this moment is because Amazon went through some trouble with shipping and so on um, during the very start of COVID and uh, lockdown and quarantining things like that there was a whole slew of sellers that quit and this was just because they got tired of trying to navigate that landscape of you know fulfillment and you know orders not getting uh, sent out correctly or on time or even for weeks or whatever and so you know even though Amazon has millions of vendors there's this gap that just opened up you combine that gap with how much Amazon has exploded and there is a window right now where there's not just an ability to get in there's a need for new sellers uh, Amazon isn't 
you know, they're not even able to keep some products in stock because no one's selling them anymore. And the thing is, is Amazon doesn't, you know, they don't personally sell every item on sale. In fact, third party sellers, which would be you or I, um, account for more business that we're the ones that sell the stuff through Amazon's platform. We do more business than Amazon does itself. So that's why they need more and more sellers, the more and more they grow. So right now is, you know, in my opinion, probably about the best time to get in it since back in the days of 2013 and 14 when it was wide open for people. All right, uh, next slide. Um, now that doesn't mean Amazon doesn't have their problems. Okay. With the platform itself, with being a seller itself, but also with the whole landscape of people selling the idea of selling on Amazon to others. And that's the reality is because, because Amazon's so popular, because people are making money by selling courses, teaching others how to sell on Amazon. Everybody's coming out of the woodwork to be a guru about it. The sad fact is most of them have either very little track record. They only know one little piece of Amazon. Now that it, it might work. I'm not saying it doesn't, but they only are aware of what they do. And the reality is, is most of them haven't actually done it. They're selling you screenshots of other people's materials and or just fabricated period. So you're not really learning what you need to do. And the fact is, is there's more than one method to sell on Amazon and it not every way is right for everybody. So when everybody tries to say, oh, this is the method that you have to do, that's not necessarily the case. Everybody's in a different spot financially, what they've done before, what they know how to do, the time they have. And that's a decision that you need to make. So, um, it's great. Amazon's great. I love it. I think most people, that's the best bet that they should go into if they're trying to, you know, develop some type of business or entrepreneurial effort. But it doesn't mean it doesn't come with its own problems. And a lot of it is the fake guru syndrome where people know that they can make money off of selling it to others. Okay. So now I'm going to introduce you to the four main methods from Amazon. Okay. Um, they've been around for a while. They're the four most common. Now, there's a thousand ways you can sell on Amazon, but these ones are the ones that are being touted the most, and they all have pros and cons. Anybody that says, this is the method you need to do, and there's no you know downside to it, there's no risk, there's nothing, they're a liar, period. There's just no getting around it. All of them have pros and cons. That's why you need to see what those are and decide what they are, what's right for you. You know, where you're starting off, which one is the best method for you. So let me introduce you really quick to the four methods, okay? The first one is called private label. This is how I got started back in 2014. Um, and I'll explain more in depth what each of one of these are. Second is called drop shipping. The third is retail arbitrage and the fourth is wholesaling. These are just the four main methods that most people are teaching right now. So now we're not going to get real deep into each one of these today because I want to shoot uh, a specific method showing you how each one of these is done over the next four days or so. Um, but I still want you to be able to get an overview of all of them so that you uh, can start to, you know, see where you fit in this picture. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So the first one, private label. Okay. This literally is taking a non-existent product or brand or listing on Amazon and taking it all the way from start to finish. Okay. Now this doesn't mean that you have to, you know, design a new type of can opener. That's not what I mean. Uh, it just means that there's nothing on Amazon already. Uh, you have to start all of it. 
So let me show you an example and it'll be easier to understand. So now I just searched barbecue gloves and I'm going to use that as the example through all of this for the most part. This is a private label seller and I won't get into all the reasons I know that, but um, barbecue gloves was a big hit for private label sellers um, and I'll explain why. Now when I say barbecue gloves, okay, and you have to take it from start to finish, let me show you what this listing is, okay? So here's his product. You look at all these, you know, pictures that he has down here, this uh, big uh, title and these bullet points and um, all of this stuff here and whatever. And then all of this was not created by Amazon. It was created by the seller himself as well as sourcing these gloves from somewhere, getting them branded, negotiating uh, all of this. And I'll show you a source. So this is um, a source where people find goods. And now you can see this is relatively the same product as here. Now these look nicer because that was designed that way through the photography and Photoshop and stuff. But you see how it sells here for 19 bucks? buy the whole kit for two dollars from this manufacturer and just because of things that i won't get into um look there's over almost 1300 reviews on this this product's been selling for five years this private label seller has probably made a, about a half a million dollars from my estimation from uh the numbers that i looked at on just this pair of barbecue gloves that he is probably buying in somewhere between the range of a dollar to two dollars okay so now let's get back to private label okay now uh that means this field's wide open this is why i love private label because you could literally start with any type of product um you can love it you can hate it it can be in any category um, you have control of the whole thing from start to finish, so it's your whole business. But this also means there's many pitfalls along the way. Uh, it's harder to compete now. You know, you'll never compete in barbecue gloves anymore because it was swamped by private sellers. So that means the field has narrowed, okay? It does take generally a lot of capital to get started because you have to buy your product up front, get it branded, get it shipped all into Amazon's warehouse so it can be delivered quickly. Um, that does mean Amazon takes care of the shipping to the customer, which is fantastic. Um, which is an, can be a nightmare if you're trying to do that on your own, especially if you get popular. But, you know, this is something that somebody is willing to put in the time and effort to do all of this. So that's private label. Okay, next is drop shipping. Now, I call this essentially the same thing as private label. Um, you're, you know, picking a product, but you don't have to do so much branding, but you're still going to create the listing. You're going to write the title and take pictures and whatever. But instead of buying a ton of uh, product up front, you're buying them individually. As soon as someone buys it on Amazon, then you buy it from your source and ship it to them, okay? So this means you have a ton of tech flexibility to test products. Um, you're just responsible for putting up the listings and getting them ranked and yada yada. Um, you don't have a ton of money up front because you're waiting to purchase the product from your source once somebody's already bought it on Amazon, okay? You don't have to buy thousands of units at the time, okay? And I'll show you where you can do that, okay? Here's another site that you can buy individual units like barbecue gloves. You can see here for three bucks and have them shipped directly from this manufacturer to the consumer. Now that's great. This one is in China. It's gonna take 30 days. Most people buying on Amazon are not gonna be happy about that. And that's the thing with Amazon and what you have to be careful of is they're very strict about fulfillment uh, of product on a timely manner so you can get yourself into trouble very very quickly with this method 
It's one of the earlier methods that got started on Amazon, and so Amazon's cracked down on it somewhat. It's also very hard to know whether your suppliers ahead of time are going to keep their deadlines as promised. And Amazon does not give a lot of leeway for you making mistakes with your shipping, even if you're brand new. They don't care. They want you to get it right from the beginning. Okay, I told you pros and cons with all of these and we're going to briefly cover each one. I'm already at 15 minutes. I don't want to make this an hour long thing. I just want to give you an overview. Okay, next is called retail ar arbitrage. This gives you absolute flexibility to test any product. There's almost zero upfront cost because the same thing, you're not buying it until somebody else has already bought it and then you're having it sent to them. There's a ton of ways to discover e deals that you either find them somewhere else and sell on Amazon or you find them on Amazon and sell them somewhere else. Okay, I'll show you an example. This is eBay. Okay. You can buy these gloves right here on eBay for six bucks, free shipping, free returns, great, okay? This one up above, same about thing, they're just kind of a generic barbecue glove. Now look, on Amazon, same basic barbecue glove, but selling for $10 more, okay? So if someone had this listing and they were doing arbitrage, they created this listing and whenever one of these sells on Amazon, they go over to eBay and buy it and ship it to the person. Now that sounds great and like easy, but again, you're dealing with shipping times, which you have to be very careful about. It's incredibly difficult to scale because you have to be able to make sure that your supply from a place like eBay or another, you know, online source doesn't run out, that they're shipping on time. You're having to watch all of these different platforms. And this is if you're only doing it online. The other version is where people do shopping at places like Walmart, where they buy things on clearance and then sell them on Amazon for the retail price. Now that's possible, but that's why I call this more of a hobby than a business. It's incredibly difficult to scale and to keep track of and to get quality sources that you can keep doing this without constantly running out of products that you're having to do over and over and over again. This is the real original method of how people are doing arbitrage and Amazon is not super kindly toward it. So you have to be very, very careful to watch your P's and Q's as far as making sure you don't cross any of their guidelines. The last one is called wholesaling. There's a very flexible startup cost with this because instead of having to buy a ton of products at front or building the whole thing, you can start small or you can start large or anywhere in between with the budget that you have. And this is because you are fulfilling items that are already selling on Amazon. So you remember how with private label, I showed you that someone had to build this entire thing from start to finish, well, not with, with wholesaling, you're selling products that are already for sale on Amazon. And I'm gonna give you an example in just a second, okay? Um, there's a method to this that includes Amazon fulfilling your products, taking care of returns, you're free to sell pretty much whatever you want as long as it's already uh, selling on Amazon. That's why there's so much flexibility. But let's talk a little bit about the downside. Okay, I'm going to show you. This is a U.S. wholesaler. Okay, Lee Marpet. Uh, you sign up for one of their wholesale uh, accounts and then you get access to all the products they have. I'm going to just show you this one real quick because it was just the first example I found. I'm not saying whether this is a good product or not but I'll just give you an example. This thing right here, you can buy from them for $3.60. Here is the exact same product on Amazon selling for $15.63. Now Amazon takes about six bucks of that in fees, so you're down to nine and a half, but you only paid three and a half. So there's $6 of profit 
in this one little product. So, like I said, I'm not saying whether this is good or not because there's more things you have to look into of whether it's actually selling well, and then obviously you need to buy enough uh, different products from them that you're not paying shipping and whatever. But let's say you sold one of these a day. $6 doesn't seem that big of a deal, but that's $180 a month. It's very easy to scale because you can find a dozen, 50, 100, 200, 300. You can find so many of these products because they're already listed through wholesalers that you can get shipped directly to Amazon. You never have to touch the product. All of the listing is already taken care of by somebody else. Amazon does all the fulfillment. But the reality is there's a ton of math involved. You have to constantly be checking numbers to make sure that you're not only making a profit, but also that it's selling often enough on Amazon to make it worth uh, selling how many other sellers are selling it on Amazon and to get these accounts. Now, I'm not saying you have to talk to people, but to get wholesale accounts, most of them aren't as easy as just feel, filling in an online form through an email and signing up and then all of a sudden you have an account. Most of them, you do have to talk to someone. So if you're absolutely terrified of the phone, and you are so afraid of it that you're not even willing it to pick it up to make money, then this probably wouldn't be for you. But if that doesn't bother you, or if you're willing to do a little bit longer route of only going after wholesalers that will sign up through an email, then this might be the right option because it is flexible. So that's just an overview of the four different main ones that you can do. So what next? Okay, I'm gonna end this video quickly but what I'm going to do over the next few days is I'm going to take a deeper dive into each one of those methods. Okay, this video is at 22 minutes. I'm going to make probably about that long of a video for each one individually. Really talk about the pros and cons. Show you how it's done. Show you the pitfalls that you run into, the startup costs that you'll have, uh, the, you know, things that aren't being told to you when they say, oh, this is the best business ever, you know, and then I'm going to give you what I call from the best fit for me checklist. It takes a look at, you know, what money do you have to put into this? Uh, because that can affect which one you do. How much time do you have? How much knowledge of the system you have? Uh, do you have any, you know, previous experience to sh see which one of these is best for you? And then uh, you can get an individual response from me. You can send those checklists back to me. Uh, if you want some help deciding how to get started, you can ask any questions that you want. I might even just do a live Q and A when we're done because I'm sure a lot of you'll have the same questions. For now, that is an overview of what to do next on Amazon. I'll see you over the next couple of days.